we are now in a position to put the two elements of our consumer behavior together to figure out what we call the optimum consumption point. The indifference, of course, tells us the willingness or your preferences, while the budget line tells us your affordability. This analysis will be very useful because it will enable us to show how much of each of the two goods that we were talking about previously, uh, apples and oranges or good X or good Y, the rational consumer will buy from a given income or budget. The consumer would like to consume along the highest possible indifference curve because we know when the indifference curve is to the right, it will result in the highest possible utility. So let's see this analysis through a diagram where we now bring the budget line and the indifference curve together in our analysis. Let's say our budget line is this blue line which is telling us our affordability of goods. And let's say we have various indifference curves, for example, I not, I one, and for example, I two. And I can keep on drawing indifference curve to the right because I know indifference curve to the right will give you more utility. But we may not need to draw all of these indifference curves because we know this, that beyond this budget line, things are unaffordable, so we may not be able to buy. So let's restrict our analysis to, let's say, these three indifference curves. Let's also name some of these uh, points for our analysis. So let's call this uh, point, for example, R. Let's call this point S. And let's call, call this point T. Uh, and, and let's see what happens when we look at various points and their utility. One could uh, agree that point R, S, T, they are on the same budget line, which means all of these points are affordable. So I can write this that R, S, and T are affordable. But if you look at R, S, and T, R and T are on the same indifference curve than I1. I1, one could argue, is on the right of I0, so therefore it has a higher utility. So if I ask from a consumer preference, he'll say he'll prefer I2 over I1 and I1 over I0. So if I See, while I2 is completely unaffordable with the current budget line, we may not be able to consider I2 in our analysis. But if I look at I1 and I0, one will say that since R, S, T are affordable, the point S, on the other hand, will give us higher utility than the point R and T because it is not only affordable, but it is also on a higher indifference curve. A consumer would like to consume along the highest possible indifference curve that is affordable to him. So that would mean point S will become what we call our optimum point. It is important to note that this point S is also the point where the budget line is touching or is tangent to the highest possible indifference curve. At any other point along the budget line, the consumer would get a lower level of utility. For example, R and, L, R and T are those points where you're getting a lower utility. But the point where your budget line is tangent to the indifference curve, we say this is the point where you get the maximum possible utility from your given budget. So if the budget line is tangent to the indifference curve, we also know this, they have the same slope. Now, if I go back to our older discussion about the slope, we know that the slope of the indifference curve is simply MUX over MUY, while the slope of the budget line is PX over PY. Now, if the point S is where indifference curve is tangent to the budget line, we may also argue this, that the budget line slope is equal to indifference curve slope. In other words, I can say this, that MU of X over MU of Y is equal to PX over PY. Or the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line at point S. If I rewrite this, this may become MUX over 
px. If I bring px to this side and muy to the other side and simply muy over py, which you may realize is the same equation as our equimarginal principle that we developed when we were discussing the utility theory. So what is good about this analysis is that without knowing your consumer's utility, which is an assumption that we make in the utility analysis, we were able to derive the same result of equimarginal utility, where marginal utility per dollar spent must be same for all goods for a consumer to maximize his utility. So the point where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line is the point where we will have the equimarginal principle holding true. And since this point is on the highest possible indifference curve that is affordable to the consumer, we are therefore saying this, that he is maximizing his total utility from his given limited income. Now let's look at two possibilities of uh, a change in the consumption point or optimum consumption point. First, let's see a rise in income. If there's a rise in income and we take a same diagram, we can argue this a rise in income can result in the budget line to shift outward in a parallel manner. Now this can be shown by us shifting our budget line to the right. So let me do that in our analysis, let's just shift it to the right, and it will become a possibility that the indifference curve that was previously not affordable will now become affordable. So if I look at my new budget line, my new budget line, let's say, will become from B1 to, let's say, B2, and with this new budget line, due to a rise in income, I will now be able to afford indifference curve I2, which was previously not in my budget, and I will now be able to also be at a point which is tangent to the indifference curve, let's say this point U, which is on a higher indifference curve. So one could say this, that a rise in income can result in a shift of the budget line to the right, and ultimately we will choose a point which is tangent to the new or higher indifference curve which was previously not affordable. So this point U will now become our optimum point. And at this point, we will say our equi-marginal principle is holding true. In other words, the marginal utility per dollar spent for good, for example, X, which in this case is oranges, is equal to marginal utility per dollar spent of good Y, which is apples. So MU of uh, A over price of A is equal to MU O over price of O. Let's now look at a change of uh, price of any one good. So if there's a change in the price of uh, either oranges or apples fall, then there will be a pivotal shift in the budget line. So let's say right now my budget line is the white one and we are maximizing our utility by being at point S where indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. If now the price of let's say oranges goes down, my budget line will pivotly shift outward like this. Now that shift would mean now no longer will point S be the optimal point. We will now need to find out uh, the new optimum consumption point, which will be on a new indifference curve and budget line. So with this budget line, I will find out that indifference curve, which is tangent to our budget line, let's say I1, or point, for example, U. Now, we can say this, that this point U is again the point where, since the budget line is tangent to the indifference curve, the equi-marginal principle will be holding true. So the idea behind a fall in the price of, for example, oranges or price of good X will mean my budget line will now pivot outward and we will then come to a point where the indifference curve will be tangent to the budget line. Now this information can help us actually draw our demand curve because when the price of oranges went down, so if I draw our demand curve right below for oranges and plot these quantities, for example, I take this down to Q1 and also take this down to Q2 because now when the price went down, 
my quantity is going up in terms of my consumption and let's say previously my price was p x and now has has gone down to p x dash because the price of let's say oranges are going down from p x to p x dash this will mean that i can now find out my demand curve or or derive my demand curve from this information so when the price of a good goes down the budget line will pivot out and we will come to a new consumption point uh, let's say q2 and previously we were consuming q1 and this will mean i can derive my demand curve for for this good now this is a downward sloping demand curve which we do expect when the price goes down the quantity demand goes up and the reason is simply because when the price of oranges were going down let's say good x was going down our marginal utility per dollar spent was going up for good x and that in turn resulted in us, in us to buy more of good x and that's why quantity of good x were going up leading to what we call a downward sloping demand curve so the indifference curve theory is useful in us to even derive an individual's demand curve for the good